Hello, I'm Beth Gaddis, the Vice President of Marketing at Patient Vision, and I'm joined on set today with Janet Hageman. Janet, it's a pleasure to welcome you to the set. Yes, as always. Janet and I go way back. We've actually known each other for more than five, six, seven years now. Mm, probably, yeah. <laughs> Janet is an international speaker. She's an author, a consultant. She was the Director of Dental Hygiene at a large DSO that we both worked at. Mm-hmm. And you've written a book called Selling Dentistry, Ethically, Elegantly, Elegantly and Effectively. Effective. And I think that's a, something that a lot of teams have trouble with, you know, getting that case acceptance number up and getting patients to say yes to the treatment that's being presented to them. Would you agree that's a huge problem in a lot of dental practices? Well, it is a huge problem. Only 30 to 50 percent is typical case acceptance. That is shocking to me that it's such a low number. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And the only way to know that is to track your numbers. So that would be the first thing that I would say is track what is your case acceptance. But um, just I think part of just the reluctance of acknowledging that we do we are in the business of selling dentistry Mm -hmm. to the effect that you resist that concept. That's what holds you back. Mm -hmm. When when you think about it, we're all in sales, all of us all the time. Right. From the mother who's trying to get her kids to do homework <laughs> so that we can go to Disney World if you if you do your homework. To the um, young woman who may be trying to convince her employer that social media isn't just playtime. It's actual a viable marketing um, right. tool. Uh, to the wife who's trying to convince her husband, no, honey, salmon rose is a great color for the living room walls, whatever, you know. We it's all, persuasion. It's the art of persuasion and right. whether we realize it or not. So it's not, are you, do you sell? It's how good are you at it? Right. So just giving some attention and acknowledging some ways to focus on selling dentistry, the ultimate benefit being when patients say yes to treatment. That's the ultimate goal. So I think that a lot of people feel like the... The acceptance level, of, you know, the case acceptance level, it really falls on the shoulders of whoever is doing the treatment presentation. And that's not the case. It really needs to be a process all the way through. Is that correct? Absolutely. Not only is it not the case, it's not, uh, it's not effective mm-hmm. because that's the final step. or that it, That's not even the final step. That gets, that gets close. There's so many other things that should be taking place prior to that. So what are some of those touch points, would you say? Well... Everything from the mindset of the whole team that has to be totally on board. The doctor has to be congruent. The team has to be congruent. Mm -hmm. And I would say actually having a whole team meeting dedicated to how do we really feel about selling dentistry? I mean, when you think about technology and how quickly things evolve, think about um, implants. Mm -hmm. They've only been around for about 45 years, reliably and predictably. Mm -hmm. I mean, if someone had told you 80 years ago that you could take a metal pin and screw it in a jawbone, put a fake tooth on top, everything would grow back beautifully and it would be like your own tooth. You wouldn't even know. You'd think they're crazy. It would be magic. Yeah. And now it's quite predictable and, and normal. So everything from that to anesthesia, which is just a wonderful, miraculous thing that we have for our patients. So if we think in those terms instead of, oh, I have to sell dentistry or if these people are coming in, they only want what their insurance pays for. It's that mindset of positivity and that we have an amazing thing to offer our patients. So I think the mindset at the beginning is important throughout the whole office. Well, we, I have read somewhere that Patients actually are making the decision whether or not to accept what's being told to them um, before they ever even see the dentist or get examined. That really is those first impressions, you know, from how they're treated on the phone, how what the office looks like when they first walk in, how they feel while they're there, mm-hmm. before they even know what they need clinically. Would you agree with that? Yeah, it's an emotional thing. This is not a clinical conversation. This is an emotional conversation, and you're absolutely right. I love what patient Prism says about you giving the practices, that second golden chance to make a first impression. Right, I right. love that. Um, so the point is, okay, they get that chance. They, they get into the office. What is that first impression? And every touch point, every single person in that office that has anything to do with that patient is either pushing them away or pulling them towards. So what are the kind of conversations that you're having? Are you asking good value-based questions? Um, Are you doing good handoffs? You know, we can talk a little bit about what should a handoff look like. And things as simple as public praise. For a patient to come in and hear me say, I'm going to let Beth as our hygienist, and she is absolutely amazing. And Beth, Mrs. Jones, 
is feeling a little nervous today because she hasn't been to the dentist in eight years. But I've assured her that we have a lot of patients that are in the same situation. Just that constant reassurance that I'm not alone, I'm not the only one that's neglected my teeth for a while, right. and that it's okay, these people, and you're, you're in the right place to actually tell people you're in the right place. Dr. Ben is an amazing dentist and our patients love him and I know you are too. So you're setting those seeds, you're setting the expectations in motion well, you're for also positivity. Setting the, your team member up for success and yes. you're building trust and rapport with that patient at the same time. So it's really important to do that. So you talk a lot about you know, planning, training, and implementing as mm -hmm. being the three keys to success when you're changing this mindset of, of team members to match the mindset of the patients. Can mm -hmm. you tell a little, talk a little bit about that? Well, the planning part is in the meetings. It's all in those meetings and making sure, I mean, I would write down in your vision or your mission for what your, your company stands for, whether you are a solo practice or whether you're a group, what, is, what, is, what are your key values? And then make sure everybody's on the same page. And then how do we implement that? Mm -hmm. So, for example, if we say one of our key values is the oral systemic connection, what do we do to support that? Mm -hmm. Do we do periodontal screenings on everybody? Do we do oral cancer screenings on everybody? And how do we present that? And how does every person on the team should know what their role is in selling dentistry? So the assistant may not be the one that presents treatment. You may have a designated person for that. But what are the things that that assistant, he or she, can do to support selling dentistry, to support the patient saying yes to the treatment that they need? And you're talking about clear conversations and communication with your staff, but you're also talking about making sure that you have clear systems in place and that everyone knows what needs to be done consistently in order to be effective every single time. And you talk a lot about that. Yeah. Absolutely. So that's when your team meetings come into place. What are our systems? What do we believe in? And if we do believe in them, how do we implement that? And then that becomes your clinical protocols that you follow each and every time. It's not a given. You, you do them every time because that's part of who you are. That's part of your, your culture. So, you know, part of this is what is the revenue that we're losing from our patients? You know, we do a great job of marketing, and then we do a great job because we work with patient prisons, so we get them in the office, but if we're only getting 50% compliance and they're walking out the back door, not only are we leaving revenue on the table, but there are all these patients walking around that have disease. Periodontal disease is infection, and something a lot of people forget is that decay is an infection. Right. It's the most chronic infectious disease on the planet. Mm -hmm. All right. So, um, and we're here to solve that. For people. We're here we're to here solve to that, them. and that's what they come to us for. So, why is it that they leave without getting the treatment? Somehow, we've missed the boat. We've missed that relationship piece. We haven't gotten connected. So, um, so that's the goal. Even if we don't do all the treatment at once, and we can talk about that um, a little bit more, um, at least we plant the seeds and get engagement and start and keep that relationship going. Well, that is, that is fantastic information, and if people want to learn more about you and, and some of the videos that you have that are available to people, they should go to www.janethagerman.com, correct? JanetHagerman.com is my uh, website, but also I have a free uh, three-part mini-series that's a video, very short pieces that you can watch at a staff meeting, and that's www.sellthatsmile.com. Janet, thanks so much for joining me today. I really appreciate you My pleasure, in. as always. Yeah.